Hello everyone, it's Jordan here back again. We're taking a look at all the Switch physical releases from the 22nd until the 26th of August. And my God, have we got a packed week for you. Just insane, frankly. But before we take a look, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell button, plus check out my brand new channel, a bit more Jordan for a lot more me. All right, obviously we've got to start with the most highly anticipated game this week. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Look, I don't have any issue with this game in particular, I just have an issue with how lazy the publisher is because in the UK, this is also called 5th grader. What the hell is a 5th grader? Speak English, man! This could mean anything to us. Couldn't you have just regionalized the title to 10 year old because that's what everyone in the UK knows this game show as. Anyways, enjoy being outsmarted by kids and their snooty, overly proud parents. I wonder which ones are doing drugs these days. All of them. Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is releasing physically in the US this week. This was an exclusive to Japan for like half a year or so when I reviewed it. It's actually quite a good game. It's addictive and offers a decent excuse to keep replaying it to unlock pictures, which is great for me since I'm not much of a high score guy when it comes to shooters, so that extra incentive is great to keep me playing. Visually, it's quite cheap looking, but honestly, it's surprisingly good to play. Go check out my review. I don't think this is releasing in Europe, at least not right now. And our executive producer, Elisa, has chosen this as her pick of the week. Nexamon and Nexamon Extinction Double Pack is releasing in North America and Europe this week. This is two games in one of good Pokemon wannabes. I know we got absolutely ribbed in our review, I think Alex uh, had a fair point but obviously the hive mind knows exactly what's up. I haven't played them myself but they look half decent and you're getting good value for your money here. Two Pokemon games in one. When it comes to real Pokemon you usually have to pay for two cartridges for one game the other way around so yeah this is nice although if you already own extinction maybe this package is less enticing although if you don't then this is great and our executive producer Issa agrees because it's his pick of the week NHRA Speed for All is releasing in the US this week. I don't know what NHRA stands for, but I assume it means Naughty Horses Run Amok. It must be. This is a drag racing game. No drag queen sprinting here, but high powered motor vehicles going in a straight line. Games like these have been around since the Atari days, although that was probably the last one up till this point. So now it's time for the manliest of manly revivals. Going straight ahead, forget brakes exist and try not to Richard Hammond it. Maybe that's why it's not releasing in the UK. Pac-Man World Repack is releasing this week in both North America and Europe, but in the UK I know that it's exclusive to game the game shop game.co.uk. It seems Bandai have pulled off the impossible and released a physical equally in both regions. How they have blessed us. I mean how can you argue with Pac-Man though? This is a remake of a classic PS1 game. I remember enjoying it quite a lot even though my memory is kind of vague. A very solid game that brought Pac-Man to a more modern gameplay style. Away from the arcade style munching and perhaps the first time they did it successfully. I'm excited for this one and I appreciate the awful repack play on words. And our executive producer Jonathan Rumor has chosen this as his pick of the week. Arcade Paradise is releasing physically in Europe this week, I think. Remember, Limited Run Games handled this in North America. I've heard really good things about this one, despite the trailer doing its best to put people off. Seriously, marketing teams, don't blow your budget on actors. In a YouTube trailer, it puts everyone off. A TV ad, I understand, but online, no. Anyways, this is a mix of management sim as you take care of a laundromat but then gradually introduce arcade cabinets which can be also used to earn money as well as you being able to play them. And they are supposed to be pretty good, a lot of variety. I saw reviews for this one were good so yeah, maybe pick this up at some point. And our executive producer Jennifer M has chosen this as her pick of the week. Madison is perhaps releasing in Europe physically this week. Not sure what's going on with the US release. This is a horror game as you may have guessed already. It's supposed to be a pretty decent one from the reviews I saw on Steam. And if the Switch trailer is supposed to be believed, it runs nicely on the system too. Nothing more unimmersive than a janky horror game on the Switch, but this looks fairly on point. Psychological horror where you take photos to help solve puzzles. Seems like a neat idea in a horror game. Why has no one else blended photography and horror together before? I think that could work. And our executive producers, Cartoon Soren and Precision Plague have chosen this as their pick of the week. Deer Simulator is releasing in the US this week. Yep, another import exclusive finally biting the dust. 
This was available in Japan for perhaps a year or so, but then they realized North Americans like deers. They love blowing them to bits, so let's give them the game. Yes, this is another wacky game that's anything but a simulator, more like Goat Sim, yet even more bizarre if you can believe that. I don't know if this is coming to Europe or not. Alright, let's head into the low prints. In Other Waters is One Print Games' latest Nintendo Switch release. It's been quite a while since they did Paradise Kill, I was starting to get worried there. I guess this technically also counts as an import, but I'll stick it in here. In Other Waters is a pretty cool concept. It's planetary exploration as you are guided through an alien ocean unraveling the ecology of the planet. This is mostly narrative heavy and it looks minimalistic because it is. This is mostly about unraveling a really interesting sci-fi story as you converse with your AI guide. It's definitely erring on speculative fiction rather than deep gameplay so if you're into sci-fi books this could be a really good one for you. It's available at OnePrintGames.com in a small limited edition or there's a standard edition over on Play Asia with an alternative cover. Links are below in the description if you want to purchase it along with our discount code STEENBOK. Now one print like to do triple packs but sadly unlike their last releases I have no idea what their next two following games are but I am interested and by the way it's nice to see one print doing the super rare route by having the pre-orders in stock ready to go out no waiting around like Strictly Limited or Limited Run games you'll be getting it pretty soon and our executive producer Boombox has chosen this as his pick of the week. A Short Hike is Super Rare's latest Switch exclusive release. This is an absolutely adorable game, critically acclaimed for its unique chill adventure atmosphere as you take a short hike up a mountain as a cute bird. I don't know if it won a lot of awards, but it definitely won a lot of hearts. Walk, climb, or soar to your goal in a game that lives up to its name. I guess this is where the contentiousness of physical games comes in for some people. While I personally don't mind, this game is like an hour long, maybe an hour and 20 minutes at a push. And it's like seven bucks digitally, so I know a lot of people won't be up for paying a full physical price for it, but you know, it's your choice. Super Rare have also made a really bright and colorful looking collector's edition, and they decided to bump up the number of units, 6,000 in total, which makes sense. I think people would have been mad if it was just 4,000. So yeah, I think you'll have a great time if you grab it. It's a cute game that I highly recommend. I can't resist those Nintendo DS style visuals. Nostalgia overload. And our executive producers, Brent McLean, Raven Knight and Viz have chosen this as their pick of the week. Metaloid Origin is Red Art Games' latest Switch release. This is the sequel to Metagal, which is a game I've seen on the eShop because uh, I've been half tempted to buy it so many times because it looks half decent and is really, really cheap. This seems to be a case of more of the same, longer, and so it's, I, I don't know why they couldn't have done both games in a double pack. That would have been nice. Anyways, you can pre-order this one now at redartgames.com and get 10% off with S-Watch 10. Heidelberg 1693 is Red Art Games' second pre-ordered this week, another side-scrolling action platformer that's pretty much their raison d'etre these days. This one is a pretty rad premise of you being a musketeer fighting off zombies, so you're getting the style points right there. You have to be sure to manage your limited shots well, while that's out of action you can poke them with a rapier, nice. I have to admit the animation is looking a little bit rough, although I can't resist that little mince jog that he does. 3,000 copies at RedArtGames.com. Ninja Jajamaru Legendary Ninja Collection is Strictly Limited's latest 18-month pre-order title. Yes, it seems they've taken the reins off Dispatch Games, who are supposed to be doing this, but they took your money and ran away with it. I'm pretty sure Strictly Limited will only run away with your money for the next year and a half before it turns up on your doorstep when you've completely forgotten about it and you don't care anymore. This is a compilation as old as time. In fact, I'm pretty sure a few of you already have the Japanese versions in your collection. But hey, this is a piggy badge instead Although apparently some of the games have full English translations now, which is a nice bonus. They have a standard edition as well as a collector's edition. Pre-order it now, and our executive producer Santa Tartaruga has chosen this as his pick of the week. Zeo Drifter is one of two games this week where Limited Run are bringing back previous low print titles. This is the less significant of the two since Zeo Drifter has been around forever, not really selling out in places. At Red Art Games it took quite a big discount just to get it out of the warehouse. Anyways, this is a North American release and there's two versions, one on Limited Run's website with some fantastic new artwork and also their Amazon exclusive version which looks shite. 
I don't think anyone was particularly crying for this game to get a re-release. Well, except Jules, the maker who seems to be doing everything in his power to make money from anything except the Kickstarter game he seemingly abandoned. He was a well-loved guy in the game dev community up until he went radio silent with your money and worked on other games instead. Weird situation all around and you know a lot of baffled people. I wouldn't buy anything of his until he gives an update on Hatchtail's Chicken Wiggle. What's going on there, guy? Mutant Muds Collection is his other product that's getting a re-release via limited run. This one is a lot more significant since this was originally a super rare games release, who always promise their games will never see a release anywhere else because they're a bit wankery-ish like that. Well, this is the second one that's happened. Their super rare release is fairly pricey to get a hold of now, at least it was until this was announced. Again, it has two versions, a good looking one on Limited Run's website and a shite looking one on their Amazon store. Gotta get those double dippers, gotta add to that mountain of Kickstarter cash under the mattress. Garden Story is Limited Run's third game this week and the only one that's not a distribution title. This is a top down action game, a bit like Zelda I suppose. Here you play as a young grape who has become the guardian of the vine. It's a pretty chill game even when it comes to combat. You defend and help the town grow, cultivate crops, build stuff. It looks pretty lovely and it got high praise from critics pretty much everywhere. So I think you'll enjoy this one. There is only a standard edition, thank god. Alright, let's head into the imports and remember guys if anything takes your fancy and you would like to import it for yourself then please consider using the links below in the description and the pinned comments. If you click those links and buy something it helps support me and this series ever so much. You guys are wonderful and I always thank you from the bottom of my heart, can't thank you enough. Plus in return for using our links you can get a very nice 5% off any physical item from PlayAsia with our current discount code STEENBOCK. But please remember to click our links first, that is how to support us. I know times are tough these days and I personally can see the affiliate earnings, they've just dropped off a cliff these past 30 days or so, and I know life is pretty grim right now across all the world. We've all got priorities to look forward to, we've all got bills to pay, so yeah, if you do support us, I just genuinely, I can't thank you enough, it's, you, you're wonderful and you have weird priorities, but yeah, game's good, games make us happy, right? And there's a few imports this week that will make me very happy indeed. SD Gundam Battle Alliance is the big one this week, this is a great action RPG set in the Gundam universe. Here you take control of a Gundam of your choosing and battle your way through big moments in the series' history, but something is not quite right. Yes, history has been altered and you need to go fix it. Here you'll find a fantastic action time with plenty of moves, decent amount of customization and a good dollop of classic mobile suits to pilot. I can't wait to share my review with you this Thursday, but I think you'll be happy with how it plays once you learn the more advanced techniques. Be there for my review on Thursday, there's no western physical for this one but the Japanese and Southeast Asian versions will have English, grab it with the links below. Idol Manager is the second game this week I'm very weirdly excited for. When you think of Jordan from Switch Watch, you think of a guy born to handle needy drama queens. Yeah, I can't imagine I'm going to be good at this, but oddly enough, I'm really excited to give it a try. It's a management sim with quite heavy story elements, I've heard it's really tough, and I should be getting my review done for it in the near future, if I have the time. Could be a tight one. My real life job is starting up very soon, which will suck my soul away, but I hope I can give you my proper review later this week, maybe Wednesday or Friday. Stay tuned! There's no Western physical announced, but the Japanese physical release does have English, and you can import it with the links below if you fancy her excitable anime babes. Who doesn't? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge is releasing in Japan and Asian regions this week. Normally I'd gloss over this but these two releases are worth looking into since they do offer something a bit different. In Japan you get a soundtrack CD and acrylic diorama, while Asian versions come with an art book and sticker sheet, both of which are reasonably priced if you get free shipping, more so than limited run and maybe the European release, at least they give you extra. And our executive producer, the man in Japan, Vei, has chosen this as his pick of the week. Of course he has. Tetsudo Nippon, Rosen Tabi, Meichi Tetsudo Hen is an interesting train game. There's already one of these out on the Switch, however this newer one does not have English sadly. I can't imagine that being too essential, but it's a pity nonetheless. Still, an interesting title if you like trains. Wrestler, 
and Disco Elysium, the final cut, are also releasing in Japan this week, a little bit late for those guys. And finally, Saga Frontier Remastered is releasing in Hong Kong regions after being a Southeast Asian exclusive. Pretty much the same game, but probably has Chinese on the back rather than English, but still, the game should have English on the cartridge. And before we end the show, I want to shed some light on some recent import announcements. Yes, some good news for fans of imports. River City Girls 1 and 2 Double Pack is getting a release in Japan this December. I think this took many people by surprise. We were all expecting the second game to get an individual release, but Arc System Works went one step further and did what Japan enjoys doing best, value packs. You get the original River City Girls alongside its sequel, for a reasonable price. Cheaper than Limited Run's River City Girls, what? Sadly, this does not include River City Girls Zero because I'm pretty sure Limited Run would explode from rage. So it's not the full experience, but still better than expected and a reasonable, like unbelievably reasonable price too. It's cheaper than the original River City Girls. Grab it before the price shoots up. It does have English, and as we all know, Limited Run will do a North American release, but it's going to be hard to compete with the value of this because they won't want to reprint the first game, and I doubt they're going to put River City Girls 2 cheaper than 35 bucks. Akai Katana Shin is a cave shmup revitalized for modern consoles. Coming mid-December, this Japanese release with English includes three versions of the game that looks absolutely fantastic. I don't have a whole lot to say about this right now, but expect a hardcore thrilling time. This could come westwards, I suppose it wouldn't be unheard of, but for now, this is a Japanese exclusive with English and has a collector's edition as well. Oh yeah! Now, there's no community spotlight this week since I've got about a billion videos to make and no time to do them. So I hope you forgive the break this week, but it's a packed episode regardless. My voice is already killing me. So yeah, I think you'll agree it's fine for a little bit of a break. Don't send me any more pictures because I got them. I got them good, okay? Now, before we end, I do need to give away that bug snacks code. I asked you what you thought my favorite insect was and literally the first answer got it right. I spat my tea out when I saw it and actually 17 of you got it correct, which is worrying because either I'm massively predictable or I told you and I forgot about it. I'm not sure which one's worse. Anyways, the answer was a praying mantis, of course. So here are the names, at least the ones uh, I saw who wrote mantis. And the winner is... Certified! Certified, please contact me via anywhere, probably. I think you're on Discord. I remember you on Discord, right? Can you contact me over on Discord and I will give you the bug snacks code. Thank you everybody who guessed my favorite insect was a mantis and those who guessed incorrectly. Insects are awesome. I love most insects. In fact, just a quick fact about me. There are three insects I hate. Mosquitoes, flies and ants. Now, normally I would like ants, but uh, yeah, I'm currently at war with ants in my apartment right now. Yeah, they're kind of like invading. Well, they've been invading me for the past five years, and I keep trying to, you know, get them away. But they keep coming back, so I'm sick of them. Sick of them. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Let's Get Physical. Special thanks to our executive producers. As always, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Sam Tartaruga, Alexander Kato, J Cross 7776, Elissa, Punky Dooster, Cartoon Star and Robotech Z, Raven Knight, Thorn Metaluna, Parsnip Coffee, Isa, V, Mental Traveler, Grant Search Viz, Jennifer M, Instacritic, Precision Plague, and Katacha. Yeah, thank you ever so much. Plus you. Yeah, you watching right now. If you watched all the way through, leave me a bird emoji in the comments in honor of a short hike the most popular game this week or a robot in honor of sd gundam battle alliance why did nobody choose that as their pick of the week what's going on you're mentalists but i love you yeah anyways birdie or mecha you choose one there's no mecha bird sadly go check out some of our other stuff check out my brand new channel a bit more jordan for a lot more of me i'm currently working on my silent hill retrospective i've completed it five times to get all the endings uh, so yeah, that's going to be not this week, it's going to be next week because I've got a lot of shit to do. And uh, yeah, be there for my Gundam review on Thursday and stay tuned for Idol Manager review. I'm not sure when that's going to be, but it's going to be sometime this week, I would guess. Thank you, take care. Bye.